Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth in the library and today I'm going to give you a lot of Canvas tips for students. And this is because I take class usually at least once a year in Canvas and I am reminded a lot of times when that happens that there are a lot of things that students don't know that you can do in Canvas. And so I wanted to show you that because we, me as a student or as an instructor, want the technology to not get in the way of what's happening. So my tips today, we might break these out. So we're going to have the uh, Canvas tips for the dashboard and your different dashboard setting options. We're going to go over the module tricks for expanding and following the order. I'm going to take you all through the grades and talk about the different options in the grade books. We'll talk about video tricks for if your instructor uses videos. We'll discuss Canvas notification. I'll tell you about places you can get technical help. I'll give you my discussion tips. And then maybe just a tiny bit about time management, because I also maybe struggle with a little bit of time management when I'm a student. So with that, let's get started. First things first, let's log into Canvas. This is actually the most popular video on the library YouTube channel, which you should totally subscribe to if you are a Coastline student. We're going to get to the login page. And for the Coast Community College District, which has three colleges, Orange Coast College, Golden West College, and my favorite, Coastline College, you get the login page. On this login page, you can log in with what's called your Coast username and password. There is also this option below here that says alternative Canvas login using my college email. And that is a way I use to log in, but let's take you through both ways. If you click on the Coast username and password, the single sign-in page will come in to log in. And when you go to log in, it's going to ask you for a one-time password. And if you're new, you're going to need to set that up, and it's either going to send it to a text message to you, or you could designate it to send it to an email. I personally find this incredibly frustrating because I have to do the one-time password all the time, even though I click the remember this computer, it doesn't seem to do it because of my security settings. So I have chosen the other option, which is the alternate Canvas login using my college email. So that will bring up this page. And once you've set it in, you might, you'll have to set it up, set it up the first time. Then you can just log in with your college email and your password and you don't have to worry about the one time password. So either way, I recommend that you at least set this section up as a backup because every once in a while, the uh, single sign-in option, that other page will go down and this is the kind of the back door into Canvas. I use this one all the time, like I said, because I don't want to have to worry about the one-time password that they continuously send me because it's not one time, it's like every time for me. So just so you know that. Since we were talking about the one-time password, I wanted to show you where you can change that or set up your settings for how you get that in your My Coast portal. So I'm in My Coast portal. I will click on the icon that says it's me. Now I'm going to click on My Account. And here I'm able to manage my account. So here you can click on Password Recovery Verification Methods with One-Time Passcode. It will show you what you have and you can change it. So to change it, your options for the one-time passcode are phone, email, or help desk. But I would let you know there is another option to do a mobile authenticator. And one of my colleagues totally recommends this. So when you decide to do a mobile authenticator, you can download the Google Authenticator or the Portal Guard Password Reset app, and you can have it set to your phone and then you would say what kind of entry description you're going to have. And so what happens there is then you have a passcode that's on your the app and it will be sent to you that way. So I just wanted to let you know there are multiple options for setting up your one-time passcode and where you'd like to get it. Okay, now when you've logged into Canvas, what's going to show up is what is called your dashboard. Now, let's start with, let's make sure your courses are showing up. And to find your courses, you can click, you'll see them here on your dashboard. But if you feel like you're missing one, you can click on courses. And you can go down to all courses. 
And then you can take these and you can click next to the courses you would like to see on your dashboard. There's a star. If you click on that star, it will fill in and those will be the courses you see on your dashboard. And I think this is important for the beginning of the semester so you can see the courses you would like. And then also at the end of the semester or the beginning of a new semester because you might want to remove old courses that still show up. Okay, we're back on the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you actually have different options for how you view the information that's here. So there are these three dots, these ellipses on the right corner. And if you click on those, you'll see that you have different dashboard views. You have the card view, the list view, and the recent activity. I personally choose the card view, which you see here. This is what the list view looks like. Oh, and because nothing's due, it's not showing anything yet because I waited to do this till the end of the semester. Um, but normally what would happen here is it would give you a list of everything that was happening in your course. And then the recent activity view. So that would tell you the announcements from your courses, if things had been graded, different things like that. Like I said, I personally like the card view. And then one of the other things about the card view is most of it as the default has this thing called the cover overlay. And when and that happens, it kind of mutes the uh, tiles or the card view. And uh, in my case, I don't like that, so I just take it off. So here you are. So over here on your dashboard, in addition to clicking on your tiles to get to your classes, which we'll do in a second, it also has recent feedback on the side. So once you're active in your courses, you can see the recent feedback you've gotten. Um, it also has this coming up option. And usually what will happen is when things are due, this is where you will see that. Um, and in addition, you can click on the view grades. I just want to let you know this information is here quickly. I personally find that sometimes it's a little too much going on over there, but that's me. So then you're going to go to your class. We'll click on the tile. And welcome to your class. Okay, so now we're in your class. And what happens here is it usually is the home page for your class, so there'll be a lot of information that your professor will have here. Additionally, on the right side of the page, we'll have your to-dos, options, your recent feedback, some of the same stuff we saw in the dashboard. I like to look at it in my class because on the dashboard it has feedback from every class, but then when I go to my into my actual class in Canvas, then I just stay in this class and I keep my content together. So after you reviewed the home page, the thing you're most likely going to click on is the modules. So at Coastline, all faculty have to go through the same Canvas training, and we use what we call a Canvas shell. And so we use the, the same kind of template. Most of your courses at Coastline will follow a really similar template, so you'll be able to see all the information together. So when you get to uh, your course, so my first word of advice for the modules is to go through and go in the order of what is presented by your instructor. Um, like I said, we're at the end of the semester and one of the students in our class, when the instructor opened a discussion board for like feedback from the class, they said that they felt in the class, they said they felt in the class that it was really difficult because they had to learn everything just by reading the textbook. And another student pointed out that the, our instructor actually had lectures, had PowerPoints, had videos, had all of these resources that our classmate had missed for the whole class. So they had only gotten the information from their textbook because they hadn't gone through the modules in the order they are presented from the instructor. Because if they had done that, they would have seen all of that information because it was presented every week. So I really encourage you when you come in to click on modules and then to go in the order that the in instructor has put the information because it really builds on things and then it will you won't miss stuff, which is really important in an online class because we sometimes feel like we're jumping around, clicking on assignments and different things and we miss really, really important details. I'm a visual learner. For me, videos really, really help me learn. So when a professor provides those, I really don't want to miss them. So my trick is after you've gone through your module, you can collapse it just by clicking this little triangle. And this is how I keep track of where I am in the class. And it really helps me then not to feel overwhelmed when I log into the modules, because then I can go through and be like, okay, cool. I'm actually, you know, on module four, which is for week whatever, and I can get things done.
Let's talk about grades. Yes, grades are super important, and I am that student who is always checking on my grades. So maybe you're the same, maybe you're not. Let's talk about grades in Canvas. In Canvas, in the navigation, to look at your grades, you will just click on grades. And your grade book is going to come up. And before we get into any of the stuff, let's talk about how you can arrange it. So the arrange by, you have multiple options. I choose to do arrange by due date. You can arrange by module. Actually, I choose to use module user usually. So when you click one to change, you just click apply. And that will shift your grades and it will organize them, you know, based on how you have them arranged. The other thing to know is that Canvas will keep track of your current grade. And so congratulations to me. I barely got an A. I am usually like a B plus, A minus student. So I'm super excited for my final grade. So let's go through the grades. In the grade book, instructors offer a lot of feedback on your assignments. And so when you see this little chat icon here, this little chat icon means an instructor has given you feedback. So if you click on that, you can see the feedback right here inside of the gradebook. But if you click on the hyperlink of the assignment, you can see the your whole submission in addition to the feedback. And one thing that is here is you can add a comment back to your instructor. In the library workshops, we have this option and a lot of times students will add comments back to us if they have some questions and we answer them. So this is just an option to, inter to interact with your instructor. So I'm gonna go back to the grades. So also this other icon next to this little chat icon, which is really just your feedback icon, this is the rubric for your assignment. So this is how you can see how you were scored based on the rubric. And this is important, I think, for me as a student to know where I miss points or to kind of understand what I'm getting graded on. So this is just the grades. I know it's important and this is where you would look for those. I mentioned I'm a visual learner and I love videos in my class, but every once in a while I'll have a professor who will put in a video that's like an hour long. And so this is my video trick. In most of your videos, you have the option to turn on captions. Accessibility is really important, so you can turn on captions. So if you want to read what's going on in the video, you don't. if you can't listen to it, you're in a place where you can't listen to it, that works. The other thing is that the video has a speed option, like a rate. So they have a normal rate, which is what's happening right now. It's a normal rate. But I usually go in and I increase the rate. I usually put it at 1.25, sometimes even 1.5. So the video plays faster. And I just find that that helps me to still get the content, but not be slowed down if the person is talking slow or if the content is slower than I need. You also can slow down the content. Sometimes that's better. I love videos because you can pause them and rewatch them. Um, but just remember, you usually have those tools to do those kinds of things. So captioning, the speed of the video, and replaying them. Those would be my video tips. All right, now let's talk about Canvas notification and communication. And you might be like me as a student. A lot of people, a lot of my instructors will say, set up your Canvas notifications. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I mean, that was before I became an instructor. Now I know. So let me tell you about some Canvas notification options and then how to communicate with your instructor in Canvas and then other options for how instructors communicate with us. So inside a Canvas, under your account, you have an option for notifications. And what these notifications are is you can decide what notifications you would like to get and how you would like to get them. What these notifications are is that you can decide if you would like Canvas to send you basically alerts for different things. And you can have it sent to your email or to your phone. The options you have is you can get notified immediately, you can get a daily summary, a weekly summary, or you can turn your notifications off. I would encourage you to go through and look at these and decide which ones you would like. If uh, you would like to get notified immediately, if you'd like to set it up to your text message, or if you'd like to set it up to your email account, that's what notifications are. So we're going to now talk about communications. So no notifications are where you're getting pushed information, but communication is where you're getting a little bit more interactive with your instructor. 
to, to communicate with your instructor. In the grades part, I showed you that you could comment on your grades. That was one way to communicate with an instructor. But the other way is to use the Canvas inbox. And you would just go in here and you would create a new message and you will select your course and you will write your information to your instructor. And I will just say, if your communication is about any kind of technical issue, it really helps to show some sort of screenshot. So to take a photo with your camera, see if you can upload it, or to take a screenshot on your computer to point out the information that's happening. When students contact me and are having technical problems, I'm always, I am always ask for a screenshot, and that really helps me, like I said earlier, I'm a visual learner, to figure out how to help them. So this is the Canvas inbox for a way to communicate with your instructor. Another way that you get communications in your class is through what are called the announcements. In the announcements section, your instructor will send you announcements. And on the home page of each course at the top, it usually has your recent announcements. But if you like, you can also click on the announcements in your navigation in Canvas. And you can see all of the uh, announcements that have been posted for your class. And I point this out because sometimes you want to go back because your instructor has given you really cool resources or you feel like, oh, I have this announcement come in and I want to see it. In your notifications, you can also get your announcements sent to whichever device, your email or your um, text messaging, if you would like those. So just know that that is an option for communication. You can also communicate with your instructor at their email address. But I have found that almost all instructors who are teaching using Canvas encourage you to use the Canvas inbox. And the reason they do that is they're in Canvas, they're inside your online class quite often, and they will see the inbox message really, really quickly. So just see how they, they would prefer to be communicated with, but you almost always, I think you'll see it's the Canvas inbox. Okay, let's talk about discussions, because a lot of classes have discussions as an option. And so faculty are usually really good about telling you the requirements of the discussion board, which usually means you have to post by a certain date, answering certain questions or based on certain information you've read in the class, and then you need to respond to classmates um, by a certain date and sometimes on different days. So read that and know what that is. And now let's talk about some of my discussion tips. So the first thing is you don't have to read all of the discussions. Even though faculty will ask you to read all of them, you do not have to read all of them. You'll find in the beginning that you'll read your classmates and you'll start to kind of see what's happening. You'll get a feel for how it's going in the discussion boards. It is, I have found, really, really um, informational. I really like reading most of my classmates' stuff, so I try to go through and do that. But when there's a week that I can't get to everyone, I don't panic about it. The other tip that I personally have is when I go to respond to somebody, I try to find another classmate who hasn't had someone respond to them yet. That, to me, is easier. You know, if someone has uh, multiple conversations already happening, I'm like, let me go find someone who hasn't had inter someone interact with them yet. And that's who I try to respond to as a student. So there is also uh, sometimes a requirement or your instructor will encourage you to respond to students that have uh, responded to you. So the easy way to do that is when you're in the discussion is that you can search for your own name. Here, where it says search um, entries or author, I usually just type in my name, and then it will just give me everything that I've written and then people who have responded to me. So if my instructor has asked me to respond to people who have responded to me, it makes it really easy to see what that is, and then I can hit reply. One thing I will say about the discussion is that I'm... I know people maybe don't believe this because of the YouTube channel for the library, but I'm actually a private person and I'm very cautious about how much of myself I put out into a discussion. And some of the questions sometimes that are asked, you know, you kind of, you have to maybe put a little bit of yourself out there. So I would just be cautious. I believe that classrooms are safe spaces and I believe that these discussion forums are really safe places for us to explore the class content, to, to connect with our classmates, 
But I also understand that sometimes in text, things like sarcasm don't come through or people don't understand my personality, so they might not understand how I'm writing. So I always kind of think about that when I'm doing my discussion posts. Additionally, I mentioned this in the grades that you can look at the rubric. So if your instructor has a rubric for a discussion, make sure that you're following that so you can get the max points. Discussions are actually a really, I don't want to call them an easy place to get points because they do take a lot of thought and you have to do, read the material. But if you're interacting, it's a great way to interact with your um, instructor. It's a great way to interact with other students in the class and to learn other perspectives. So it is, it's funny because it's one of my least favorite things about a class because I'm always like, oh, I have to go out there and be myself. But it's one of my favorite parts about the class because I always learn so much. So those, I think, let me double check my list. Yep, those would be my tips for your discussion. Next, my tips are gonna be about technical help. And I mentioned this in when we were talking about communication, that you should include a screenshot whenever you're experiencing technical help for your professor. But your professor is not the only one who's there to also help you with technical help. At Coastline, we have a whole Canvas help group that is ready to help you. If you need technical help, you can um, email them. It's just canvashelp at coastline.edu. And the same thing, whenever you're asking for technical help, I highly, highly encourage you to use a screenshot. I have a video at the YouTube channel for the library. It's called Help Me Help You. As much information as you can give us when you're experiencing some sort of technical problem will help us help you. There's help at the district, but I haven't found them to be the district which covers all three colleges. I have not found them to be as helpful as the Canvas technical help at Coastline, which I highly encourage you to utilize. My next tip is gonna be a little bit about time management. I said I was a student this semester. I also was full time. So many of you are like me working and going to school and it is definitely difficult to do online classes. We see that in the student study habits survey that we send out, we the college send out every year. So one of my tricks is that I have a sign. Like when I'm working, I have my library office sign up. I just put it up so my husband knows, hey, I'm working. And he'll sometimes walk in and start talking to me and I'll be like, I'm sorry, did you wanna visit the library office today? <laughs> so when I'm in class, I make a point of telling him like, hey, I'm in class and taking a quiz. Sometimes I even put a sign on the back of my computer that says testing, do not disturb. Because in our society, we're on our devices so much, a lot of times those around us don't know that we're actually in class versus just surfing the internet or watching YouTube. So I try to visually let them know that. Another thing that's kind of interesting is um, trying to carve out time for our class. And for me, that ended up being really early in the morning this semester which is crazy because I usually like to get up and go running in the morning, but it started to get dark. And so I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my reading and I'm going to work on my class. And I found that that really, really helped me to get my work done. And that is definitely one of the options um, for time management. There's lots of resources at Coastline to help with time management if you're interested in that. And also any kind of mental health you need, we are here for you. As students, I understand um, being an online student can be isolating. Sometimes we just kind of feel like a number. I have been an online student a lot. And I personally, I've mentioned, I'm a visual learner. I like classrooms. I like that interactiveness that you kind of get. So I have always tried to find a way to, able to have that for students in what we do in the library and in any class that we teach. So part of the responsibility is yours to try to make sure you follow the modules, that you interact, and that you make the effort. But also the responsibility is on us as instructors to make sure that we design really good classes and we get back to you. Here at Coastline, I think that we're always striving to do that. We want you to be successful. The majority of our students are working, have so many things going on. We just want to be here for you and not just a nine to five. Like in the library, you can call or text us whenever you want. We'll try to get back to you. So those are things for, for me. This is why I did the Canvas help is because when I'm a student, I sometimes struggle. I have lots of students call me in the library who are struggling and I don't want you to struggle. So I hope this helped and good luck with your class and have a great semester. That's all. Bye.